Section 5-3, Solving Polynomial Equations. Today, students will be able to solve polynomial equations by using different forms of factoring. The first thing we are going to look at in this section is a review from previous sections, and it's factoring out the greatest common factor. Now, before you go to do every problem, you should always check for the GCF first. So is there something that goes into 2x cubed, that also goes into 4x squared, that also goes into 6x? And hopefully you're all saying yes, that 2x goes into all of that. So 2x cubed divided by 2x leaves me with x squared, minus 4x squared divided by 2x leaves me with minus 2x, and 6x divided by 2x leaves me with 3. Okay, then you want to look inside the parentheses to see if you can factor it more. Are there two numbers that multiply to positive 3 that add to negative 2? And the only way you would get to negative 2 was if you had negative 3 and positive 1, and there's no way those two things are going to multiply together to give you that positive 3, so you are all done with this problem. The second type of factoring we're going to look at is also a review, and it's the quadratic trinomials. So an example of a quadratic trinomial is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So in this trinomial, a is not 1, so we are going to have to factor it by grouping. If it was 1, it would make it easier. So to factor by grouping, we need to multiply a times c together, so 2 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 4. And then it needs to add to what b is, so it needs to add to 3. So two numbers that multiply to negative 4 that add to positive 3. Those numbers are going to be 4 and negative 1. So remember, we bring down the first term. And then we can either write the 4 or the 1 next. Since I see that a is a 2, I'm probably going to write plus 4x next and then minus 1x, and then bring down the last term, the minus 2. Draw your line down the middle. Okay, look at the left-hand side. What does 2x squared and 4x have in common? A 2 and an x, which leaves me with x plus 2. Remember, whatever that sign is, you have to bring down that sign, so since it's a minus, we bring the minus down. And then what goes into 1x and 2? Just the 1, so that is also going to make it x plus 2. Remember, if for any reason those two parentheses were not the same, you made a mistake somewhere. So then you factor out the x plus 2, since they have that in common, and you're left with 2x minus 1. Now we are going to talk about perfect squared trinomials, and this is also a review. Remember, for it to be a perfect squared trinomial, you should be able to take the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, and this middle term is 2 times a times b. So I noticed while I was grading your test last week that you guys know how to take the square root of the first and the last term, but you don't know how to determine based on that middle term if it is or isn't a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to take the square root of 4x squared and we get 2x. We're going to take the square root of 9 and we get 3. And we bring down that minus sign, we put parentheses around it, and we square it. And that's how you factor a perfect square trinomial. I would highly suggest checking to make sure that it actually was a perfect square trinomial. So a is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, times that 2 gives me 12, so it is a perfect square trinomial. Still reviewing, now we're going to talk about differences of squares, and this is where you have two terms. Take the square root of 25x squared, and that leaves you with, I'm sorry, 5x. Okay, take the square root of 81, and you get 9. One of those parentheses gets a plus sign. The other one gets a minus sign. Next, we're going to look at factoring by grouping, which you have worked with before, but not necessarily in this scenario. So this time, we're given x cubed, 2x squared, minus 3x, and minus 6, OK? I hope that this um, looks familiar to you, because you have 1, 2, 3, 
four terms. Whenever you are given four terms, you are going to try to draw the line down the middle of it, factor the left-hand side like I had you do earlier, and then factor the right-hand side. So let's see if it works out. What does x cubed and 2x squared have in common? Just x squared. When you factor out an x squared, it leaves you with x plus 2. Okay, whatever sign comes next, you bring down. What goes into 3x and into 6? 3 goes into both of those numbers. But remember, you're treating it as negative 3. So negative 3x divided by negative 3 leaves you with x minus 6 divided by negative 3 leaves you with positive 2. You would know if this wasn't going to work if inside those parentheses they were not the same thing. In this scenario, they are the same thing, so it works. So I factor out an x plus 2 because they both have x plus 2s, and you're left with x squared minus 3. Now we are going to look at sum or differences of cubes. So now this is the brand new part of today's lesson. So whenever you are given something cubed, you would have to take the cube root, just like when you're given something squared, you have to take the square root. So that's going to be your first step. The first step is to take the cube root of both things that are given to you, okay? So the cube root of 8x cubed leaves you with just a 2 and an x. The cube root of negative 64 gives you minus... Four. That means minus 4 times minus 4 times minus 4 gives you 64, which is true. Okay, now that is just the beginning of your factoring process, okay? After that, you must now use this word called SOPS. And the reason we call it SOPS is to help you remember how to get the second factor. Um, the book leaves it with A's, B's, and pluses and minuses, and it's really confusing. So the first S stands for square the first term. Okay, so the first term that we have in that parentheses is 2x. So what is 2x squared? Okay, so 2 times 2 is 4, x times x is x squared. Okay, after that we're going to move on to the O. The O stands for the opposite sign. So the opposite of this minus sign is a plus sign. Okay, P stands for the product of the two terms. So I'm going to take the 2x and I'm going to multiply it by the 4. You don't have to worry about the minus sign because you just put a sign here, okay? So we're just going to take 2x and we're going to multiply it by 4 and 2x times 4 gives me 8x. And then the last S again stands for squaring of the last term now. So 4 squared or negative 4 squared, either way you're going to get the exact same answer, is going to be plus 16. That last term is always plus because anything squared is positive. And now when you go to solve, which we're going to do in the next section, this second parenthesis, you are always going to have to use the quadratic formula. And the reason you're always going to have to use the quadratic formula is because the 4x squared plus 8x plus 16, whatever you get from SOPs, is always going to be imaginary. It's never going to not be imaginary. Now we are going to use all the factoring techniques that we just went over, and we are going to use them to help us solve these polynomial equations. So we're first going to look at x to the fourth minus 3x squared equals 4. So the first thing you want to do is make it equal to 0 so that you can go ahead and start factoring it. So after you move your 4 over, I hope that you notice that this looks much different than we've seen before. This is x to the 4th and then x squared. You do know how to factor it, you just think that you may not, okay? So I want you to treat it just like it was x squared minus 3x minus 4, so the exact same thing, okay? So if it was x squared minus 3x minus 4, 
you would be looking for numbers that multiply to negative 4 that add to negative 3. So some numbers that multiply to negative 4 that add to negative 3. So that's going to be negative 4 and positive 1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase this right here because it's not actually in the polynomial. It's just what we use to help us. So um, it would be x minus 4 normally times x plus 1. But obviously, if you were to FOIL that back out, you would get x squared instead of x to the 4. So all what you're going to do is change just the x to x squared. Now, x squared times x squared gives me x to the 4th, and this now is correctly factored. So then you want to ask yourself, can I factor x squared minus 4 or x squared plus 1 any more than they already are? And hopefully you remember that x squared plus 4 is a difference of two squares. So you take the square root of both of them, one of them gets a plus sign, the other one gets a minus sign. Now, the reason I cannot factor x squared plus 1 anymore is because it's a plus 1. It's going to give me an imaginary answer instead of a real answer. Um, remember, it's called difference of squares for that reason. Okay, so now to find what x actually equals, we have to set each individual factor equal to 0 using our zero product property, and then we're going to go from there to help us solve. So to move positive 2 to the other side, we are going to subtract it. To move negative 2 to the other side, we're going to add it. To move positive 1 to the other side, we're going to subtract it. And to get x all by itself, we are going to take the square root, which gives me x equals plus or minus i. So now since this is x to the fourth as my highest degree, I should have 1, 2, 3, four x's as my answer and I do so I solved my problem correctly. Now let's solve x cubed equals 8x minus 2x squared. So first step bring everything to one side so I'm going to bring the x squared to the other side by adding it and the 8x to the other side by subtracting it. Okay I have three terms so it makes it a trinomial and since this is x to the third, um, it's not a difference of um, cubes or sum of cubes since there's one, two, three terms. Um, I would always want to check for the greatest common factor first. So is there a factor that goes into x cubed, x squared, and just your x term? And hopefully you notice they all have x's in common, so that leaves you with x squared plus 2x minus 8. And then you would want to factor your parentheses even more. So are there numbers that multiply to negative 8 that add to positive 2? And it's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. Don't forget to bring down the x. Then to find your factors, you set them all equal to 0. And x equals 0 is already solved for, so to move positive 4 to the other side, we're going to subtract it. To move negative 2 to the other side, we are going to add it. And so the answers are 0, negative 4, and 2. And since this highest degree was x cubed, you should have three answers, and you do. Now we have x times x squared plus 8 equals 8 times x plus 1. And we want to start by using our distributive properties, so that's going to give me x cubed plus 8x equals 8x plus 8. If you notice, they both have 8x on both sides, and then set it equal to 0, so x cubed minus 8 equals 0. So, since there's two terms, and since the first term is cubed, this is a difference of cubes. So, first step. Take the cube root, cube root of x cubed is x, cube root of negative 8 is minus 2. That means negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8, which it is. And then after that, remember, we do SOPs. So the S stands for square the first term. So x squared leaves me with x squared. Okay. O stands for the opposite sign, so the opposite sign of minus is plus. 
P stands for the product, so x times 2 gives me 2x. Remember, you don't have to treat it as negative 2 since you've already put the sign up there. And then lastly, the S at the end stands for square the last term. So negative 2 squared gives me positive 4. Remember that last term always has to be positive because anything squared will give you a positive answer. So now use the zero product property. x minus 2 equals 0. x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. And if you remember when we were factoring this, I told you that you were always going to have to use the quadratic formula because it was always going to be imaginary. So x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all divided by 2 times a. Now we're going to keep on simplifying. So negative 2 plus or minus 2 squared which is 4 and then negative 4 times 1 times 4 gives me minus 16 all over 2. 4 minus 16 gives me the square root of negative 12 over 2. Simplify the square root of negative 12. So two numbers that multiply to 12. So that's going to be 4 and 3. The square root of 4 gives me 2. Since it's a minus sign, it's an i. The 3 stays under my radical, and it's all divided by 2. And then remember we simplify. Negative 2 divided by 2 leaves me with negative 1. And then 2i root 3 divided by 2. Remember, guys, it only cancels out that 2, so you're left with the i root 3. A lot of you guys were still putting that number under the radical on your test last week. So just remember, once you divide, it's gone. It's not there anymore for that second part. So the two answers, x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 plus or minus i root 3. So to check, I started when I simplified with x cubed, there should be 1, 2, 3 answers here, which there are. Our last example is x to the fourth equals 16. So remember we're solving by factoring, so that means we have to make it equal to 0 before we can solve. And again, remember when it's x to the fourth, you are just going to treat this like it was x squared minus 16, and then we just add the little twos back on. So that's a difference of squares. So you take the square root of x, and that leaves you with x squared. Take the square root of 16, and that leaves you with 4. Remember, one of them gets a plus sign. The other one gets a minus sign. So then you can simplify x squared minus 4 some more because that's a, again, difference of two squares, so you do it twice. You cannot simplify x squared plus 4 because it's a plus sign instead of a minus sign. Set them all equal to 0. So x equals negative 2. It would help if I added the 0 there x equals positive 2, x squared equals negative 4, take the square root of both sides, so x equals plus or minus 2i. I started with x to the fourth, I should have 1, 2, 3, 4 answers, which I do.